Hafideh Amuni Kebeler from the Pacific Daily News, and here are our top stories from the PDN Newsroom. Guam Cancer Care will suspend services to its approximately 1,500 clients effective Friday, November 1st, after running out of grant funding from the Guam Cancer Trust Fund, said senior patient navigator Ellie Ongrung. Ongrung said Guam Cancer Care has operated the past 13 years on grant funding from the Trust Fund, but the latest grant expired October 31st. The direct services suspended Friday include free chemotherapy drugs, financial assistance for patients to pay for treatment, free patient transport program, and free patient supplies such as nutritional supplements, colostomy supplies, commodes, and wheelchairs. The trust fund, which is administered by the University of Guam, was allocated $1 million in the fiscal 2025 budget, but Guam Cancer Care and other cancer care providers lobbied successfully during a hearing in October to add another $2.5 million in the supplemental budget bill, which is still awaiting action by the governor's office. Ongrung said the $1 million original budget allocation was split among several tertiary cancer support service providers, while Guam Cancer Care and two other direct service providers, Catholic Social Services and the Total Guam Foundation, did not receive any funding. Port Authority of Guam Board of Directors Thursday authorized a multi-step bid process to replace the gantry cranes at the port that are nearing the end of their service life. During a meeting Thursday, Vice Chair Conchita Titano reported on a meeting on the sidelines this week of the American Association of Port Authorities annual convention. She said representatives from the AAPA, the U.S. Defense and Transportation Departments, listened to Guam's pitch for the critical new cranes to replace cranes purchased secondhand in 2009 that are over 40 years old. Port officials said with these cranes nearing the end of their service life, the port capacity to manage cargo effectively is at stake, especially amid rising geopolitical tension. The Guam Water Works Authority got an average of 35 calls from customers with no or low water pressure in each month of fiscal 2024, according to General Manager Miguel Bordalio. GWA also saw 14 thefts over the course of fiscal 2024, with people stealing equipment and supplies. He told the Consolidated Commission on Utilities this week as part of his annual evaluation, Outage calls are slightly higher in fiscal 2024 than the 31 calls per month seen in fiscal 2023. Outage calls are typically related to breaks, leaks, or service outages in a customer's area, according to Bordalio. At the end of any given day in fiscal 2024, the leak backlog sees about 17 water leaks outstanding for GWA, he told CCU. Recent steps to tackle water loss have improved response to leaks, but much of GWA's pipes are now at the point that they need to be replaced, he said. In other news, the Guam Housing and Urban Renewal Authority Deputy Director Fernando Estevez announced the construction of a new hospital in Manila will move forward despite concerns of sinkholes in the area. In a recent opinion piece for the Pacific Daily News, writer Dave Lotz highlighted visible sinkholes at the location, a claim supported by an aerial photo and a U.S. Geological Survey topographic map of Dededo. Estevez addressed these concerns, confirming that his team is aware of the sinkholes and that geological analysis and proper engineering will ensure safety. Sinkholes formed when groundwater erodes underlying limestone bedrock can vary in size and pose potential risks for construction. Estevez added that Gura would not have received the construction permit without completing the necessary preliminary steps. For more of these stories, go to guampdn.com and follow us on social media.